Lord. Hey, y'all. Good morning. Welcome to Road to Damascus. Today, we will be celebrating the Lord's table. Uh, so this is your time right now. Go ahead. 
uh, start preparing to get your bread and whatever be beverage beverage that you're going to be used to celebrate the Lord's table. Uh, we'll go right into the offering uh, and then to the song and then right into communion. Uh, but today is the day we are celebrating the Lord's Supper. And speaking of sowing into the ministry, <laughs> Uh, we have, uh, we thank you and appreciate those who continue to support our ministry. We ask that you continue to prayerfully uh, consider supporting Road to Damascus Church. Uh, we have four ways that you can contribute to the ministry, uh, PayPal, Givelify, Cash App, or just mail a check to our post office box. The information is on the screen for PayPal. Our email is info at r2dchurch.org. For Givelify, it is road, the number two, Damascus. For Cash App, it is the dollar sign R2D Church. And for our post office box, is post office box 1382, Norwalk, California, 90651. Your help, your gifts, your seeds that you've sown help us to uh, uh, further our ministry. Our scholarship drive is still going on right now. We're trying to raise $20,000 to be able to award scholarships to students this year. Uh, we wanna be able to award some multi-year scholarships to some very de deserving students. Uh, so we ask that you prayerfully consider. And also remember in 2021, we're going above and beyond with an extra $21, a separate $21 uh, that to go above and beyond what you already tithe or offer to Road to Damascus Church. That money is being set aside for one each uh, for four times this year, once a quarter, we're going to take that money from above and beyond and give it to a, a worthy organization, a church or charitable 501c3 organization is doing some work and we want to be able to bless them with. So continue to pray uh, and prayerfully consider sowing its road to Damascus Church. Thank you very much. I'll see you again shortly.
and our minds to participate in the Lord's Supper, we remember the sacrifice that our Lord Jesus Christ made on the cross for the atonement of our sins, the, the, the sacrifice that was made that paid the price uh, for our sins, a price we couldn't repay, uh, the debt that he paid for sins he did not commit. We remember this day and we partake of our Lord's uh, table today. We, we remember on the night that our Lord and Savior was betrayed, that he took the bread and he broke it and he said, take and eat. Can't see me. Uh, well, it, it, you can't see me, but that's okay. I thought you could because it was working earlier, but we, we are still going to participate in the Lord's table. Uh, our Lord and Savior on the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread and broke it and said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. And we do take and eat. 
And in the same manner, he took the wine. He said, this is my blood shed for the remission of sins. Take and eat, or take and drink. And we do take and drink. Father God, our Lord and our Savior, we thank you that this day that we participate in remembering your passion, your death on the cross. We don't take it lightly that you took upon the burden. You took upon our sin. You took upon every wretched thing that we have done and took it to the cross once and for all that we might be redeemed to our Father, our Heavenly Father, that salvation would be attained for us all. We thank you, Lord, because the blood that was shed would never lose its power. This blood that reaches to the highest mountain and down to the lowest valley, we are never too far away from your presence, God, that we cannot be touched by the blood that was shed for the remission of our sins. We thank you this day, God, that as we partake this blood and the bread, the body and the wine, the body and the blood, that we will emerge new and new uh, creatures in 2021, equipped to do the work that you have called us to do. So God, we thank you. We praise you. We lift your name on high and we give you all the glory and all the honor in Jesus name. Amen. Okay, so many of us have been doing church, well, differently. Sunday mornings have become a bit more casual. Living rooms and coffee shops have become sanctuaries. And fellowship has a new, less personal touch. It hasn't been easy. Yet, here we are, gathering, worshiping, learning, being the church. Now more than ever, we're reminded of a simple truth. The church is not a building. It's the body of Christ. It isn't built with brick and mortar, but with faith and hope. In the midst of uncertainty, our calling remains the same, to share the truth of the gospel with a world God loves. Throughout history, the church has prospered in difficult times, and today is no different. We are still the church. We're just doing things a bit differently. And so God, we come to you, your people this day, again, giving you praise, glory, and honor for being our Lord and Savior. We thank you, Father, for everything that you've done. We thank you for the new day. We thank you for the new life that we have, that we can go out again. We woke up this morning with our eyes open, movement in our limbs, breath in our lungs, and we are so grateful and thank you. We will never take it for granted, God, that each day is not promised, that each day that we rise, that it is a new day, a new opportunity, a, a new day that you have created, and we rejoice knowing, God, that you have given us another opportunity. Father God, we reach now to heaven calling upon you to send your angels and your spirit and your power down to us that we might feel your presence this morning on this first Sunday of Feb or this, this, the first Sunday of February that we begin to, to feel you, that we, we begin to feel your presence, that we begin to acknowledge and know that you are with us at all times, that our faith will be strengthened, that we will begin to see life in a new way, that we will begin to live life in a new way, that we will have our relationships in a new way, and we will increase our relationship and our study with you in a new way. Father God, we ask that you just come. Make your presence be known in this place, that you will be with us throughout this time, that the words that will go forth will pierce our hearts and minds and, and settle in that good ground that we may spring forth new creatures, the ones that you have created, the one that created uh, in the image of which you have created us, that we go out and do the work that you have called us to do. So God, we remember all those families that are suffering from loss right now. We, re we remember the families that are dealing with loved ones who are stricken in the hospital. We remember those who are 
ill right now, whether it's from COVID or from what other any other kind of disease, we remember those people and their families. We ask that you be with them. We ask that you be with prisoners in jail cells, that you be with the prostitutes on the corners, that you be with the drug addicts in the alleys, God, that they will turn their lives around to stop doing these things that are abusing themselves and go against your will and come into the light, the marvelous light that you have for all of us in which we can walk in your glory and in your power to do things, to bring new life to those who are struggling, to shall tell the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so God, as we go forth in this service from this first Sunday after taking in your Lord's Supper, that we took the bread and the wine, the, the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that it will do something inside of us. It will stir up something that just cannot be shut down, that it will stir up the good works that you have called us to do, that it will stir up the discipline that it requires to, to study your word. It will stir up a desire to shun the world and turn only to you, God that we may experience your manifest glory, your power and your dominion, not only in this world, but in our lives, and that we may go out and influence those within our sphere, that they will see the glory of God. We love you, Father, and we bless you, and we give your name all the glory and all the honor, and it is in Jesus Christ's name that we do pray and believe. Amen. 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 Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Road to Damascus Church. I'm uh, Pastor Ron. I'm so glad that you are here with us. And I give God thanks uh, that you uh, have chose to, to spend your Sunday morning uh, with us. We, you know, it's not like in the old days, you know, we'd say that you have your uh, choice of any churches you can drive through, uh, drive to, but now it's a matter of you have any church that you can click on. And so we thank you that you are clicked in uh, to roll to Damascus today, uh, trying to keep this background straight. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, how you guys been doing on the, uh, the trivia? Uh, today, I, I really made a concerted effort to pay attention and answer the questions. And I think I missed one. Uh, and that was about the, the question where Paul saw the idol or the 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 uh it's the, to the the offering the altar to the god the unknown god uh i put say corinth instead of athens uh but how many of y'all missed question number six which was uh, asking uh what uh where was uh who was blinded on the road to damascus everybody who attends road to damascus church should know because that's the very reason why we named the church road to damascus because saul was changed into paul and for us we are changing from who we were to who god has us uh uh, uh designed to be and if you guys have been reading the bible uh, as, as we're doing for the reading the bible in a year you definitely would have got question 11 right about uh noah and the ark what how many times did he release the dove because that was just a few days ago if i'm not mistaken it was definitely this week because we just started reading this week uh but hey it is what it is i hope you guys are enjoying the trivia and it's causing you to uh dig a little deeper uh in your own reading and studying uh asking those questions and looking up the answers yourself uh when you can uh but it's it's a nice little way to start the Sunday morning service. But hey, you know how I do it. Today is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And you know, I keep saying this week after week, because the more I say it, the more I am really believing in my heart that today is the day that the Lord has made. I, I just got a text message from one of my frat brothers uh, this week that uh, a brother who I pledged uh, when we were in college, uh, is stricken with colon cancer, uh, his second bout with colon cancer. He is refusing uh, surgery because he had gone through the surgery before and it took a, a, a toll on him physically and, and mentally and emotionally. And he does not want to go through that pain uh, in any one of those three categories again. So now it is just a matter of time uh, before he moves on to in our fraternity when we say Omega chapter but as believers that he moves on uh, with the next stage of his relationship with our heavenly father. And uh, when you start seeing people, and even last night talked to a friend of mine that a classmate from college passed away last year. 
Uh, we're only people in my contemporary age, we're only in our early 50s and people are dying now. Uh, people who, who are, you're seeing all the people who are dying from COVID on a daily basis. Life is not guaranteed. And when you begin to really understand how important it is, you too will sit here and say, today is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it because despite your circumstance, you are still alive. Despite your circumstance, you still have a chance that tomorrow is gonna be better. And it is so, I am so grateful to God each day that I have a new opportunity to be better. Uh, we want to thank uh, everyone who have prayed for Sister Treva's family. Uh, we, her, her mother, uh, Mother Scott, had was uh, diagnosed with uh, COVID. Uh, she fortunately never really experienced any of the symptoms. Uh, her cousin uh, never experienced much of the symptoms, but her brother, who has uh, asthma, was admitted to the hospital. He has since been released, so we thank God for that. I prayed earnestly for them especially praying, praying for protection for Mother Scott, uh, 92 years old. And, and you know how some of our, our, our seasoned family members are. We love them to death, but they, they get tend to be hard-headed when it comes to uh, things of health and protection in a lot of cases. And, uh, you know, they lived a long life and they figure they've already been here. Uh, nothing's going to, it's almost like when we were kids, we're invincible. And then when we get old, we start having that same, not necessarily invincible, but I made it this long. And if it ain't taking me out yet, then I ain't worried about it. Uh, it's not a necessarily invincibility, but this idea that, you know, you can overcome and overpower a lot of things. But thank you uh, for your prayers and continue to pray for those who are dealing with those issues of health. Uh, family members who are, are sick and people who are alone in hospital rooms. Uh, right now, we have people who cannot be buried uh, because it is a long line uh, from all, all the people who are dying. We also want to lift up real quick the Himes family, Carl Himes Sr., those of us who went to Brookings Community AME. I uh, know him and his family very well. Carl Heim Sr. passed away a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, uh, complications from COVID-19 and his family on Friday had his memorial service. Uh, so we wanna continue to lift them up in prayer as they say goodbye to the patriarch of their family. Uh, moving on, just a reminder, above and beyond, we are doing above and beyond. That is for 2021 every week to contribute if you can, $21 additional above and beyond what you normally contribute uh, to enhance our ministry and be able to bless other ministries for what we have. And of course, in 2021, we are still going deeper. We are all this year is about going deeper, deeper in our understanding, deeper in our relationship with Christ, deeper in our study, deeper in every aspect of our Christian walk. Uh, just real quick on Facebook, on our, on our Facebook group for the Bible reading, I had posted about, and we've only done this for a week, this is one week, week that we've been doing the Bible reading, and we know that there are people who are behind. And, and I believe me, I'm not criticizing you for being behind. I'm just trying to admonish you to do better. Uh, if you could imagine that this year about going deeper is about growing your relationship with Christ. And if this year was a year that you were uh, trying to lose weight or trying to get in shape, can you imagine if you only worked out on the weekends when you tried to make up for what you did, didn't do for the previous week? Uh, that if you, you ate like a pig all week long and then Saturday and Sunday, you decide, well, this is the day I'm going to focus on my diet on Saturday and Sunday and forget what happens Monday through Wednesday. It don't work. You're not going to lose weight by making up on Saturday and Sunday. You're not going to gain muscle and get in shape by only working out on Saturday and Sunday. It is the consistency of being disciplined with what you eat and how you exercise that you're going to lose the weight or get in shape or both. And it is the same thing in our spiritual walk. It is a consistent discipline to daily find yourself in study of God's word, because if you are waiting till Saturday and Sunday to catch up what you missed Monday through Friday, 
you're not going to be very successful in the outcome because the desire, there is an outcome. It's just like when we did Overcoming Obstacles, October. It was right, what do you have as goals? What do you want to see as an outcome of what I do? Everything about going deeper and anything in our relationship with Christ should have an outcome. There should be a plan on how to achieve it. For our plan is to read the Bible daily. The outcome is to have a stronger, more meaningful relationship with Christ. And if you are saving that for Saturday and Sunday, that's all I'm gonna say about it. You cannot get to the desired result, making up for a week of not doing what you're supposed to do on the weekend. It just doesn't work that way. Let's go to the word of God for today. We're going to the New Testament book of Hebrews. Uh, I'm running out of time. Hebrews 10 verses 19 through 25. Uh, this is coming from the New King James Version. This is Hebrews chapter 10 verses 19 through 25. And we find these words. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil, that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Ah, boy, I tell you, we love the word of God. And for this morning, we are going to use for a theme, draw near to God. Draw near to God. Uh, Paul's letter from uh, to the Hebrew church is very poignant. And uh, it was, I, I, I was in the process of reviewing what we did this past Wednesday in Bible study that led me to this, uh, this scripture in Hebrews. Uh, I, I, was in, I was really driven to just to be able to effectively answer a question on this next upcoming Bible study about uh, uh, that, that uh, a scripture in James that we're, I'm gonna put up for it in a second. Uh, but we were dealing with the last couple of weeks in Bible study, the myths that we have been fed, the things that we have been told that uh, are cliches that really have no root in the gospel of Jesus Christ, have no root in the word of God. And uh, this, um, the previous week we were talking about uh, the, the idea that, that we shouldn't speak or say these, uh, uh, how we're feeling or express negative thoughts because the devil will use that against us when in fact the devil is going, his purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, that you speaking is not going to give him any more ammunition or not speaking is going to allow him to bypass you. you know, that, oh, I'm not going to touch Ryan today because he's in a good mood. Nothing's bothering him. That, that's not true. Uh, and then we, we were also dealing with this past week, this idea that we've been told that if we take one step towards God, God takes two towards us. And, and the question was raised about the scripture in James 4, because if you read James 4, and we just read the first part of it, 4a, it says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinner, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Essentially, the first part of this, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. The question was asked, well, this is kind of, well, statement and question. This is what I think about when, uh, when I first heard you bring that question of draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Well, there, there are some things as of course, I was able to do some digging and some research and look into this. And, and what we have to understand is that the writer of this book, James, who's the brother of Jesus, and, and you think about it, he, he's got this, this interaction and a relationship that's already in place with our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the author of the entire book, the inspiration to the book of all the men who have written it over the centuries, this, uh, this book 
uh, that we we hold dear and, and believe is to be the the uh, in, a, in uh, the complete and total truth of the word of God. He he's James is writing to us. He's admonishing us as believers to draw near to Christ. He he was likening the process to draw near to Christ as the Levites. Uh, priests would draw near to God in their service in the tabernacle. It, the, the, so you remember the tabernacle in the Old Testament was the place where God's glory dwelled. This was where God was, and no one could just walk into the tabernacle. You had to be a uh, part of the Levite priest to go in there. You had to be anointed and consecrated before you entered into this place uh, where where the Spirit of God dwelled. You, you had to have on the proper clothing. It was They had the special uniform, the ephods and the turbans, and come in with the offering and the sacrifices and the incense uh, in order to come into the presence of God. And, and the priest would go in drawing near to God into the place where God dwelled. And, and, and we know that when we, before the temple was constructed, they had the tent of meeting where Moses would go in, the, the, the prophet and the priest would go in and have the face-to-face -face meeting with God. But once the temple was constructed, the priest would come in and they would worship uh, and God's glory could fill the space. It was you come in near to God and, and God is there. And, and it's the, the, the idea that God is already here. You're just coming into the place where God dwells. You draw near to him. Uh, we see this uh, in some way in Chronicles, in 2 Chronicles, uh, uh, 2 Chronicles 5, 13 through 14. This is after the temple had been completed. Solomon had completed the temple and they're dedicating the temple and you see what it says in this word says, indeed, it came to pass when the trumpeters and singer, singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice and the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever, for that the house, the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud so that the priest could not continue ministering because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. It's it, what they, what he's describing there is that the people who had come into the house of God, the, the priest and the musicians and the people singing and lifting up their voices, drawing near to God, then God's presence was made manifest. It was made known. It's, this was not simply that you took a step and God took two towards you. See, there's a difference uh, here where we're, we're identifying because you can take a step towards God, but not have, be, uh, have a relationship with God. See, see I, when I was a boy and I, and I was uh, finding my way and what I truly believed about the Lord and, and, and my heavenly father, and I remember hearing uh, the pastor, uh, Pastor Harris at Trinity CME Church, talking about that if you give, God would give you back more. And so this particular day, as I'm finding my, my, my walk and who I wanted to be in Christ, I decided I'm going to give $5 for my offering. And keep an understanding, I'm, I didn't have a job. So this $5 back in the, uh, in the late 70s was a lot of money to me. And I'm giving this money because I'm expecting God to give me back more. See, I wasn't in a spiritual relationship with God, but I was taking a step towards him by giving him this $5. But because my heart was not in the right place, I'm not doing and meeting the requirement what it takes for God's spirit to fill. If we were, if I was in the temple, his spirit to fill the temple. See, the people, when they were in the temple, they were worshiping together as one. They were on one accord. They were looking for God to be there. They were looking for his presence and they were and, and singing and praising God for who he was. James is telling us that if you draw nigh to him, he will draw nigh to you. It's not just simply you taking a step and God taking two. It is more about your change of heart because he said, cleanse your heart. And he said, you need to go and do these things. There are some things you got to do before you come into the presence of God. And if you go into the Hebrew, I'm sorry, into the Greek and read with a translation of these words, when he talk about to draw, draw, to God, it is not just simply taking a step that is, it is meant more to join. 
God. So you know, we're not talking about something where you are just simply taking a step or as me as this boy getting my little five dollars in church. It is about me changing everything else to be united and in one step with God. This, the, the thing that we talk about when we see people who come together, who are joined together, we know it when people are married, the husband and the wife, that, that therefore what God has joined together, they have drawn together, they have become one. It's the two are no longer uh, uh, two, but one flesh, you have become one. And this relationship is what we see in the Bible talked about quite frequently that God, Jesus is the bride, I mean the groom, and we, the people, the church, are the bridegroom. That when we draw nigh to God, that when we join with God, he is with us because we are joined together as one. You see, this is James is saying you got to cleanse your heart and your, uh, cleanse your hands, your body. You got to purify your heart so that you can be on the same accord as God, that you can be in the same place uh, with God, that you can have the same mindset and spirit as our Lord, that you can join together with him, that it is no longer just the thing of you taking a step and God taking two. It is about the two of you walking together. Similar to the steps that the priests are taking, they're going into the tabernacle. He's, he's talking about us as people that we need to make an entire change. The, the priests couldn't just come from their house and go right into the temple. The, the preparation to go, the, to present themselves the right way before you could go into the temple. This is the preparation you and I must take in order to join with our father. Uh, when we enter the tabernacle in the right mind and the right spirit, God meets us where we are. And, and, and it's, it is this place that we want to make sure that when we enter in, that when we get into play, in the place where God's glory is, that we are the right mind, the right heart, the right spirit, that his glory would fill the temple. I, I don't know about you, but I want God's spirit to fill my house. I want God's spirit to fill my car. Wherever I am, I want God's spirit to fill that place that I will acknowledge and feel his presence because I am of the right mind, the right heart, that I cleanse my hands and purified my heart so that I can be in the presence of God. You might be asking yourself, what's this boy talking about? What, what, I, I'm a good person. I, I, I read my Bible sometimes. I get down on my knees and pray when I remember to do it before, because I didn't do it before I got in bed, but sometimes I do it. And every now and then I get out of bed and I'll go ahead and get down on my knees and pray. Most mornings I pray when I get up. I'm, I'm thankful when the, the God has given me a new day. Uh, I'm starting to understand the, the idea that today is the day that the Lord has made. I, I've even said it a couple of times when Pastor Ron said, everybody say it with me. I've said it a couple of times. Some of y'all are like, well, I, I didn't say it, but I was thinking it when he said it. I was saying it along in my head silently. But here's the question. What do I have to do to meet the conditions that God requires for me to draw nigh to him, to, for God to, requires me to join with him? This is where we get to Hebrews chapter 10. See, James tells us to, to draw nigh to God, but Paul tells us what we need to do in order to be able to draw nigh to God. He said, he gives us, he actually gives us four conditions. And because of time, I think I'm only going to be able to give you one and we'll pick the rest up uh, next week. So here's the first condition in order to draw nigh to God. We find it in verse 22a. You have to draw, not draw near to God with a true heart. He says in verse 22a, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. We have to draw near with a true heart. And somebody's probably sitting there saying, well, you know, uh, you know, I got a true heart. Well, see, if you have a true heart, a true heart is dependable. Ah, remember when I just said before about daily Bible reading, you, you say you have a true heart, 
but you're not reading your Bible daily. You're not dependable. Uh, you, I need you to do something for me and you need to do it every day at this time. And if you tell, well, I can't do it today, I can't do it tomorrow, but I'll do it on Saturday. You're not dependable. I can't count on you. A true heart is dependable. A true heart is going to always do what it says. A true heart is always going to meet the commitment that it makes. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? This is what I want you to imagine right now. We want the blessings. We want the mercy. We want the grace of God. But what if God told you, I'll make it up to you on Saturday and Sunday. I got some other stuff that I'm dealing with right now. I got some other things I got to handle it right now that are more important than you today. But on Saturday, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll make it up on Saturday. Saturday, I'll go through and, 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 and spend all day with you. Is that dependable? Is that is that the kind of God we want? that's only going to be here for us on the weekends when it's convenient? Or do we want a God that is dependable that we can always turn to in a time of trouble? When David said, I look to the hills of which cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord. But when he didn't write, I look to the hills on Saturday because that's the only day that I know God is going to come from the hills. A true heart is dependable. And a true heart is also sincere. <laughs> uh, see, some of y'all may think <laughs> I'm a true heart. <laughs> I'm dependable, but are you sincere? Sincere meaning, are you free from pretense or deception? Are you free from sitting here trying to convince you how good you are? <laughs> But God knows <laughs> every crack in the, in the in your armor, every chink in the chain, he knows what's going on. You talking about you got a true heart, but you're not dependable and you're not sincere. Uh, Joshua, <laughs> that great prophet of God, Joshua even reminded the people after they crossed the Jordan River what it means to be sincere in your worship of God. <laughs> Are you free from pretense and deception with your worship of God and your relationship with God. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> that you're telling folks how, how sanctified, how saved you are, but everywhere you go, you bring nothing but hell and turmoil that comes with you. You're not free from deception and pretense. Everywhere you go, there's trouble. You're going to church, ride down the street, blasting Tupac, Biggie and Jay-Z, you got all the profane language. You watching porn last night. You were out at the club drinking, getting turned up. <laughs> Talk about pretense and you say you got a true heart. Joshua said, let me tell you something about true heart. There's something about sincerity. He says, you have to be totally united with God and separate from the world. Uh, this You can't be divided in your loyalties when it comes to serving God. You can't be divided in your relationship when it comes to dealing with God. Your service to God comes forward. He tells us in Joshua chapter 24, verse 14, he says, Now, therefore, fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth. In sincerity, no deception. <laughs> No dishonesty, no pretense, and sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. He, he brought up specifically sincerity, and then and when he goes on in the next verse to say, and if it seems evil to you this day to choose God, choose this day whom you will serve. And he goes on that famous verse, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Is he, we, we're worried about this, uh, whether or not God is going to take two steps towards us when we take one step. But if your heart is not true, you ain't getting those steps. You're not going to be able to draw nigh to God. You're not going to be able to join with him because you're not dependable and you're not sincere. How you think that your undependable non-sincere self is going to be united with perfection.
a dependable heart, a true heart is not divided. There's no question where your loyalties lie. There's no question who you serve. A true heart is certain where the loyalties lie. And a dependable heart is completely and totally dedicated to God. There is nothing more important to, than him. There is no issue, no person more important than God. David wrote in Psalm 3, Psalm 24, I'm sorry, Psalm 24, verse 3 through 4. Who may ascend to the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. He, he's speaking directly to sincerity and dependability. He said, those who can, who can do these things, who can stand in his holy place? The person with a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully. How are you insincere, undependable, looking to make draw nigh to God. How are you expecting to draw nigh to God? Paul said, let us draw near with a pure heart. That's the first step, a pure heart to come before God. Anything else is deception. Anything else is not true. Point number two, and I'm gonna get you out of here. We'll do three or four next week. Here's the second thing we have to do. First was uh, uh, draw near with a true heart. Here's the second thing. Still in verse 22, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. Draw near with confident faith. Confident faith. When we talk about confidence and assurance, assurance is a complete declaration that you believe and have faith in what the Lord has promised. There is no doubt, there is no question, there is no wavering. You're not sitting here wondering in the middle of your situation, why is this happening to me? Because you have already had the assurance that God is going to provide. What is the point of saying that you love God and you believe in the promises of God and then question him when things don't work the way you believe they should work? You're, you're not coming forth with confidence, with assurance of faith. It, I'm, I'm drawing nigh. I want to be united. I want to be joined with God, but I'm not sure. You know how we are with our relationships. We've been in those relationships in the past with folks. We weren't sure who they were. We weren't sure what their, their, their intentions were. We weren't certain they were going to be there. Can I trust you with my heart? We've heard that, or at least a lot of us guys have heard that. Can I trust you with my heart? These people, they're debating whether or not they want to be in a relationship with you because they don't have the assurance that you're going to do the right thing. But yet we expect God, we want to draw near to him. We want to join with him. And God has no assurance in what we're going to do. And you don't have any assurance that you believe and trust in everything God says. Hebrews 6, 11, 6 tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. This is one of our scriptures from Bible study on Wednesday, that he, he reveals himself when we diligently seek him. But here was the thing, you got to have faith, the confidence, the assurance of faith, because without it, how are you stepping to him? A true heart 
dependable and sincere and assurance of faith. You, you cannot come before the presence of God and expect God to be a major part of your life, to draw near, to join with you if you are not sincere, if you're not dependable, and if you don't have the assurance of faith. Paul even writes to the church at Ephesus, he says in Ephesians 3.12, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. That we have access with confidence, the assurance through faith in him that we have access to God. See, this, there is no reason to worry about this idea that you take a step and he takes two to you as long as we are doing these things that God requires, that we come with a true heart and that we have the complete assurance, just like in the temple and in Second Chronicles, when we are all on that one accord, we're on that same page, the spirit of God, the glory of God will fill the temple. But the requirement is for us to draw near to God. So what y'all going to do the rest of this day, the rest of this week? Are you going to try to draw near to God the same half way you've been doing it, the same half effort you've been making this plan around, uh, watching the games or, uh, or, or, or watching TV, whatever it is that is distracting you, that you have left raised to a level of high importance that it has kept you from worshiping God, to serve God, to study God's word, draw near to God, draw near to God. Paul told us that we have to draw near with a true heart. Where is your heart this day? Are you the believer who plays games or are you the believer who can be dependable that's sincere and has assurance of the faith of god father god we thank you and praise you we give your name glory we call on you abba father as our help help us lord to examine ourselves, to look inside our hearts, to see where we are. Where is our heart pure? Is it a true heart that we are dependable and sincere, that you are the people or we are the people that you can count on? And God, if it is not, we, we, we take on the posture of David when he wrote in Psalm 51.10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me, that our hearts will be true that we will have assurance of faith, that steadfast spirit that we know, that we know that we know that you are our God, that you are the overcomer, you are the almighty, that nothing happens beyond your control, that you are very well aware of all of our trials that we are experiencing. And you are also giving us the hope that we can endure these things. You said in your word that uh, trouble only lasts He said, joy comes in the morning, God. Give us the assurance that we know, the assurance of faith that you are our God. We know, Father, that if we meet the conditions, that if we come into your presence with clean hands and a pure heart, that we can meet you in the temple. <laughs> that you will be present with us in the tabernacle. <laughs> but we can't come to you bringing the world in. We have to shed the world. That's why you told us to clean our hands, to wash our feet. That's why they, the priest had to change their clothes. They couldn't bring the world into your presence. So God, help us to not let our loyalties be divided between the world and you, that we will shed the world and embrace you fully, that our hearts will be dependable and sincere, 
that our faith will be confident and we can come into your presence knowing and believing that you are our help. Lord God, we love you and we thank you and we bless you in Jesus name, amen, amen. Draw near to God, y'all. Work on those, those things. Sometimes you really have to pray for yourself to realize that you are not in the place that God wants you to be. There are times you're gonna have to, uh, to get down on your knees and ask God to uh, conduct surgery on your heart to get your heart right. Just like David, when he created me a clean heart, oh God, that should be some of our prayers, creating us a clean heart, oh God, that we can experience your fullness and your grace. But he is, he is, he is. You'll, you'll get it one day. It'll, in the middle of the week, you'll be, oh, that's right, I got that. But if you're here and this is your first time and you don't know Christ and the remission of your sins, let me offer Christ to you. Uh, the Romans uh, 10 and nine, he says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved. It is a simple thing that you have to do to let welcome Christ in and make him Lord of your life. It is a simple thing to do for some of us who have been playing church for 30 and 40 years to actually make a true confession, a sincere confession to God that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. The Bible is very very clear there are going to be a lot of Christians that God is going to turn away from because they were not sincere. They were not dependable. So ask God to come into your hearts. If you have questions and you're a new believer, don't hesitate to reach out to us via email at info at r2dchurch.org. We will answer your questions. If you're looking for a church home, there is no better place than Road to Damascus. All it would take is for you to just send us an email because we're connected virtually now. We would tell you to come into the sanctuary, come up and give your, your heart to God, but you can still give your heart to God from your living room, from your bedroom, from your den, wherever you are, even in your car, you can give your heart to God. And if you want to be a part of R2D, all you have to do is say so. You could just put it on the, on the chat. You could just do it in the email and, uh, and just become a part of this ministry because we are doing what God has called us to do and will continue to uh, uh, lift him up and do what it is that God calls us to do. Uh, I think that's all I'm going to say about that. Just remember to continue to lift each other up in prayer. Uh, remember, we're going to keep praying uh, uh, for uh, Sister Treva's brother that, his, that he gets completely restored. Uh, continue to pray for the Himes family as they deal with the mourning of losing uh, of the patriarch of the family, that they continue to grow. Uh, comfort each other, that they will feel uh, God's presence in their lives. Uh, and because this is February, we want to say happy anniversary to anybody who is celebrating an anniversary in, in the month of February. And I do know we have some birthdays in February. Uh, I know for certain too. Uh, so you got to let me know if there are some other birthdays. My, uh, my cousin, who was like my big sister Gwen's birthday is this month. Happy birthday, cousin sister. <laughs> not like a West Virginia thing. She was just like a big sister because she's not that much older than me, just a little bit about big sister age, but she is legitimately my cousin. Uh, I shouldn't talk about West Virginia like that. And of course, uh, the rock of my life, the example of how to be a man, uh, my hero, uh, you know, they, there are a lot of people who call themselves fathers and call themselves dads. Uh, but there is only one Henry Thomas who has uh, labored his entire life to make life better for all of his kids and his family. Uh, a man who went to work <laughs> uh, with a lung falling out practically, but would still go to work to make sure that his family was taken care of. A man who would forego sleep uh, and forego uh, all the comforts that he would need and want to make sure that his wife could be at home and take care of the kids. Oh, 
Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, you know, he, he gave me the example of what it means to be a provider, what it means to, to be a protector of a family. It, this, he, he was a man who I observed no, no matter how scared he may have been, I never ever saw him afraid. Uh, he, he was always a rock, always solid. Uh, and I always said, if I was half the man he was, I'd be better than anybody I knew. So on February 16th, that is my father's birthday, was a happy birthday to my man, my dad, uh, affectionately known by some of my friends from high school as Big Bang Hank. Uh, happy birthday to my dad. Also continue to pray for my Aunt Kay, uh, you know, my Uncle Roscoe, her husband of 72 years, uh, passed away a couple of weeks ago from complications from COVID and she is struggling. So lift her up in prayer, please. Continue in your daily Bible reading, daily Bible reading. Let me say that again, daily Bible reading. Don't expect to get the same result saving the uh, or missing foregoing the consistent discipline to try to make up on the weekend. It doesn't work in the physical world. It doesn't work in the spiritual world. Uh, uh, and uh, coming up at the end of February will be our first corporate fast of 2021. I'm still praying for direction on what it is that we're supposed to pray for uh, and how we're supposed to fast. But near the end of February, we will have our first of prayer and fasting for, uh, for 2021. And with that, we might actually have a uh, prayer call to usher in the beginning of that prayer fast corporate uh, call uh, to usher in the the, uh, the spirit of God through that time of prayer and fasting. Uh, as I told you in 2020, 2021 about going, was about going deeper and that meant we were going to incorporate prayer and fasting at a larger level in our relationship with God. So you don't have to say amen because it don't matter. This is where we're going. And uh, like I said before, I'm dragging all of y'all, kicking and screaming, if you will, but we all going together. Leave no man behind because this is not how we roll. So I think that's all I got. Uh, my wife is not standing off to the side, reminded me of anything. Uh, I just want to let you guys know that we are still here. We are still growing. We are still changing the world one soul at a time. And we're going to continue to do the work of God and we are so blessed that God has uh, uh, allowed us to be used uh, to build his kingdom. I'm thankful and grateful for it. Uh, you should be as well. Uh, so I think that's it. Uh, let me let y'all go so you can get on with the rest of the day. Uh, I don't know who's going to win the Super Bowl. Uh, I quite frankly don't care because I'm a Raider fan and I refuse to cheer for the Kansas City Chiefs because we're in the same division. And I refuse to cheer for Tom Brady because he won his first Super Bowl uh, after they cheated my Raiders. Uh, and that was how he started his first Super Bowl. So as far as I'm concerned, the game could end 0-0. I will be watching with my pizza and wings, but I don't care who wins. <laughs> if the Raiders aren't there, it's not important. Anyway, uh, I think that's it for certain. Uh, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, so the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord uh, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. God bless us until we meet again, that while we leave this place, but never from your presence, let your spirit dwell with us, protect us, lead us, and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all be blessed. Have a great week. I'll see you Wednesday on Bible study. Read your Bibles. Read your Bibles. Read your Bibles. And as always, this is Pastor Ron signing off, reminding you that I love you all and there ain't nothing you can do about it. God bless.